Hello and welcome to another episode. Today we are test driving the new Toyota CHR, which stands for Coupe High Rider. It's a hybrid version with a 1.8 litre petrol engine bolted to Toyota's normal CVT gearbox. So we picked this up from um, Toyota in Leicester and I have to say the dealer experience was really good. Um, he, he greeted us as we walked in, he seemed to know his stuff and he showed us the car and he, he was quite happy for us to take it for longer than the normal hour. Um, unfortunately we're a bit time limited today otherwise we probably would have had it for longer. Yeah, he was, uh, he was quite clued up, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah we, which is a, a refreshing change really because a lot of the time dealers don't seem to know a lot about the cars. That's true. In terms of spec, this car comes pretty much fully loaded. This is the highest in the in the range. They do an Icon, they do an XL, and they do the Dynamic, which is this model. It comes with just about everything you can think of. Uh, it's got lane departure, collision mitigation, adaptive cruise control. What else have it got? Three, three stage heated seats both sides. Oh, nice. e everything you would think of that you, you can think of is on this car. And one of the best stereos that I've heard in any car. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a JBL upgrade that comes with the uh, with the XL, with the Dynamic, a big pub. And I think based on the shape of the car, that certainly adds to the quality because it's a coupe. The sound travels really well from the back where there's a subwoofer tucked away. So the battery in this car is a six and a half amp hour nickel metal hydride. Tiny, about the same size as every hybrid battery that you get in any Toyota or Lexus. Um, and that, I'm sad to say, gives you about enough to get to about 10 miles an hour and then yet yeah, again the engine comes in. And when the engine does come in, what's it like? It's noisy, like really, really noisy. Ooh, that's a bit revvy. CBT gearbox. Oh, I don't like that. I think if you're looking for something that's got a bit of get up and go, as well as something that's got some eco credentials, this is not the right car. No, it's, it's a shame really because it's a really nice looking car and it's got some, apart from the back, but the front end of it's really nice, the interior is really nice and it's got some really good safety features. Um, it's got the, the lane departure warning, which it's gone off a few times and we've actually turned it off now because it was getting a bit annoying because we kept going over the lines. It's got the adaptive cruise, I think it's amazing that you get that on all the models. Yes, as standard. Yeah, as standard. And the other thing which I've just forgotten the name of. Uh, blind spot monitoring. Blind spot monitoring is a really good little feature. So yeah. The other thing is uh, the size of this screen in the uh, in the centre. It, it is rather big, is probably the right word. I, I remember driving a B-class Mercedes and all I kept thinking the whole time was, God, I wish I could just tuck that screen away. I love the screen, but I got to the point where I just wanted to, it to fold away almost. And this is bigger than that screen. And I would also like to fold it away. Also, it, it comes across as being a little bit like a cheap Android tablet. Mm, it does a bit. Yeah, it does. It's, and I mean, I mean, an Android tablet of four or five years ago. That's the way it looks. Uh, in terms of the way it works, it's okay. It's a bit slow. It's a bit Android, actually. It might be, it might well be Android, but it's a bit slow. You push a button, there's a second delay before anything happens. And in this day and age, th that's just not acceptable, is it? And for 29,000 pounds. Yeah, you, you want things to work instantly. Yeah. Let's not make it sound like we're trying to slag the car off, though, because we're, 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 we're not, but we like to pick the good points and the bad points, and unfortunately, that is a bad point. It is a bad point. In, in our in our view, some people might love it. Okay, just have a listen to this. This is in EV mode. I want to get a space to pull out. And I'm tickling the throttle and the engine's in again. That it, is exactly the same as a Lexus. The other thing is, I mean, Toyota's a really good like, make of car, isn't it, generally? They're reliable cars. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. The reliability is one thing about Toyota. I think, actually, if, if I had to choose a manufacturer as most reliable, it probably would be Toyota. My family tend to have, have always bought Toyota in the past for that reason, and they've never had problems with them. So, I mean, the likelihood is you probably wouldn't with this, but it's just, and that's a good, a good point. Also, the amount of brake regen. 
I mean, with the regen, you've got a power display and you can see when it's regening, like on most electric cars or hybrids. And um, But it's only when you put your foot on the brake. When you take your foot off the brake, there's nothing really there. No. A tiny, tiny bit. Even with your foot on the brake, there's nothing there. <laughs> there's not. It's just a normal braking yeah. car. It doesn't feel much different to a petrol engine and, or a and, diesel. And part of the reason for that is because the motor is such a, so low power, you obviously restricted on the amount you can regen, but also because the battery is so small, you're restricted on how much you can regen. So, so what's the niche for this car? Where is it? It's just same again. Uh, you no, know, the reason they're going to sell it is because actually, it's the we've been stuck with a Prius and the Prius Plus for so bloody long. And this is this was originally um, it, this this is built on the platform of a Prius Plus. So it was originally meant to. Uh, to go into competition with the Duke, ah. and, but it was on a different platform then. But they um, they realised that it, it, the handling was was not so not so good. So because it's uh, such a high riding car, I've got to say that's one thing that's appealing about it is the is the floor height. I, I do quite like that. It is nice. You feel nice and high up. You do. You do. In terms of handling, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's okay, and that that just about sums it up. It's okay. This is not sporty by any stretch of the imagination, and we know it's a hybrid, but there's one out there that's not a hybrid, and I'm sure it's going to handle exactly the same. Do you think? Yeah, I do. Oh, God. <laughs> that's 50. I think actually the 0 to 60, although they put it as 0 to 62, is 11 seconds, which is actually the same according to the brochure is the leaf but it definitely doesn't feel as fast as the leaf it doesn't I don't know you put your foot down in our leaf or uh, other electric cars I can't think which one's now probably the Kia Kia Soul and you just go yeah it's instant talk isn't it yeah. there is a, there is a delay when you put your foot on the throttle of nothing happening and I suppose for a petrol driver for a petrol car that's something that people are used to but we're we're not so you've got to be careful with that because a lot of people are driving petrols and, and they they accept that whereas electric car drivers don't no in terms of mpg 72.4 combined however we're getting 45 um, we've driven it around town we've driven it up and down the motorway uh, it's getting nowhere near the figure that uh, that they specified but then yeah again that probably comes from in the NEDC and we drive like real people and if you drive it like a real person well then you're not going to get what it says no. in fact it's absolutely nowhere near what it says it's misleading it is misleading really because you'll buy a car based on that won't you yeah and and to sit there and say that car will do 77 was it 77 70. combined just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. I can categorically guarantee this car will not do anywhere near that unless you drive it. At 30 miles an hour? Yeah, if, unless you drive it at, at speeds that are just not consistent with the road speed. Okay, so we've been driving this car for about an hour and a half now. And as much of a lovely car that it is to drive, and comfortable, well I think so. Kate's had a little bit of a change of mind on that. She doesn't think the seats are that comfortable after uh, after sitting in them for... An hour and a half. Yeah. I think they're okay, but I don't, again, it's, I have the same issue. It could just be me and my bony bum, but I think long long journeys may, may be a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. But the, you have got heated seats, which is a really nice three-stage heated seats in both passenger and driver's so. yeah. In terms of technology, I don't feel that this car is any further forward than a Prius. Gen genuinely, it drives exactly the same as a Prius. I don't feel like they've, they've done anything. No. And they've bolted it to a 1.8 litre petrol engine. And I'm sure they've got their reasons and obviously they know more about it than we do, but it just feels like it's a sideways step. And a, I know they're going to sell this car because they needed to bring out a newer model. Uh, I mean, we've been looking at the Prius for as many years as I can remember now. They, they drastically needed something new. Yeah. And but but I feel that it is just the same kit bolted onto another another car. 
but the dealer said they, they can't get enough of them. People are just yeah. buying them so quickly that they can't. They, they're so quickly that they can't provide them. But just bear something in mind: 120 pound a year to tax this bad boy. Yeah. Uh, 120 a year. Why a 1.8, not a 1.2 turbo? That's bizarre, isn't it? It is a bit strange. It makes it more, it makes it more of a petrol car again than it does a hybrid. It's just got the little added bonus of the hybrid. Yeah. Rather, rather than it being, I don't know, not all cars are going to be focused on it being hybrid more than more than petrol. But it, 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 it makes me think Lexus, the Lexus IS that we drove. It's yeah. probably slightly better than that in terms of what it does in, in terms of EV mode. And in terms of looks, to be honest, it's um, yeah, it's looking car. yeah, it is a good-looking car, just not from the back, like you said. Not from the back. <laughs> yeah. But the interior is nice. It does look a lot, lot like a Nissan Juke. I've got to say. Mm. Yeah. And it's very uh, angular. Yeah, it was one of their uh, their competitors, but I prefer this to the Juke. Yeah. yeah. Let's take it back. We both really wanted to like this car, we yeah, did, and we, we got did. in it and we looked at it and we thought, I think we're going to like this car, and we said nice things about it, and there are some really nice things about it. Would we buy one? No. If we were coming from a petrol to a hybrid? No. Or? I think, out of the hybrids we've driven, this is one of the ones I wanted to like the most. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's mm. not It's not up there, I'm afraid. No. Mainly because of the noise, the noise it makes, the vibration actually through the pedal, and um, the sluggishness of it. The lack of grunt, yeah. It is slow, it's dreadfully slow. Mm. It feels like you turn a trailer, doesn't it? Yeah. A big trailer. It does feel like you're pulling something along. And the advances in technology. The thing is, Toyota brought us the hybrid, really, didn't they, in the, mm. in the form of the Prius. They were the ones that stuck out from everybody else and said, this is what we can do. And then they've just sat on it. Yeah. It's not a plug-in hybrid. So it is, it, it is going to use the petrol engine. However, the amount that it uses the petrol engine isn't necessary. No. It just isn't. I think we've used frustratingly little of the electric mode. Yeah. The time we've been in this car. Unfortunately, it has been a bit of a quick review. We haven't had much time today, um, and we're also limited by the time we're allowed to have the car. We've done the best we can in that time, but if you've got any questions, then please, please ask them, and we'll try and answer them as best we can. And um, that's it for now until the next episode. But you know, I hope you liked it. So please click like and subscribe if you um, want to. <laughs> if you don't, you don't, don't have to. <laughs>